First grade teachers at Dixie School have been part of the Trout in the Classroom program for several years. Our sponsor is Trout Unlimited and they provide each classroom with the equipment and training necessary to raise the salmonid eggs to fry. The purpose of having kids participate in the Trout in the Classroom program is to foster a conservation ethic in students and have them take an interest in their local watershed and its inhabitants. As in past years, students posed questions to foster inquiry before beginning the unit. They asked questions like, what do they eat? Where do they live? How many eggs do they lay? During the unit, as in years past, they did activities and participated in shared research to help them learn answers to their questions. The learning experience has always culminated in the release of the young fish into one of the approved California Department of Fish and Game bodies of water. This year, I wanted to turn this wonderful learning experience into a project-based learning experience. In order to do this, I needed two things that were fundamentally different from years past to focus our learning a driving question, and an audience outside our immediate classroom community. Our driving question this year went hand in hand with a kindergarten teacher who is interested in doing this project with their class next year. The driving question was, how can we teach others to successfully raise trout eggs and help them understand the importance of keeping our watersheds healthy? Our audience was, of course, that teacher and her kindergarten class. Another key difference from this year compared to previous years was my goal to incorporate as many Common Core standards as possible to integrate this project across the curriculum as much as possible. This year, I was also fortunate enough to be able to form a partnership with two AmeriCorps members in the Watershed Program who had been placed with the Fishery Program at Marin Municipal Water District. During this movie, you will see some of the fun activities Vincent and Patrick did with the kids to teach them about watersheds. They used a program called Watershed Education for Teachers, whose activities are aligned with the next generation science standards. Every year starts with the eagerly anticipated arrival of our rainbow trout eggs. A volunteer from Trout Unlimited delivers them to many classrooms throughout the county. What I have in the container are fertilized trout eggs that came from up in Northern California, outside of Redding, California, and they were, that's where the eggs were fertilized. And they were sent to Dar from Dare Springs down to Napa, where I picked up this container this morning. Basically, what we have is this little ice chest like you'd have at home. We fill it up with ice, and inside the containers of the packed in ice, we have styrofoam cups, which have ice and craft sticks, and underneath a packet of fertilized rainbow trout eggs, where the eggs are. And the eggs have been moved in a in a cheesecloth container. Okay, and there are 35 fertilized rainbow trout eggs in here. And basically they've been sitting in water with with ice water dripping over them so they're very cold as your tank should be very cold. About 50 degrees. Open up the cheesecloth container carefully and we'll take the eggs that are inside we're going to pour them into this clear plastic container so you guys can look at them with your hand lenses. Once we get the eggs, each child has a chance to put one egg into the tank. The eye spots are easily observed at this point. This year I decided to have the children work in small groups to write a poem. One of the first grade reading standards is for children to identify words or phrases in poems that suggest feelings or appeal to the senses. We read a book called Salmon Creek, which is a poetically written non-fiction book about a coho salmon, Sumi, returning to her creek of birth before she lays eggs and dies. While each child put an egg in the tank, groups of children worked together to write the poem. This activity met one of the 21st century competencies working collaboratively with others. It also met one of the first grade writing standards which says, with guidance and support from adults, focus on a topic, respond to questions and suggestions from peers, and add details to strengthen writing as needed. Once the poems were written, children needed to agree upon and finalize the sentence strip order so that each group presentation would go smoothly. For its food. Water is mine. Um,
evil for protection. Trout are awesome. These, they grow up without their mom. The eggs need water. I live in the world of water. The trout egg Wait, H2O. The trout egg looks shiny as a star. Is that the egg? Cut! Each group's poem was then typed up or published. Then each individual student drew a picture to go with his or her group's poem. Thus, this poetry experience met another first grade writing standard which states, with guidance and support from adults, use a variety of digital tools to produce and publish writing in collaboration with peers. I see water, oxygen, H2O, cold water, clean water. I see rocks, I see water. Elvins has a yellow yolk yolk sack for its food. A little gravel for protection. And your picture? Let's see your picture, the one that you drew. Of course, water is very important to a watershed and to the survival of our trout. So one of the first lessons Patrick and Vincent did reviewed the water cycle. Then the kids pretended to be a water droplet in the water cycle. They recorded all the places they had been as a water droplet by putting a bead on a pipe cleaner bracelet. They noticed during this activity that long lines built up at the ocean. During the closure of the lesson, children were able to articulate that this was like the large amount of water on Earth trapped in our oceans. Tell me what you're making, Brady. We're making a bracelet, and these beads represent like parts of the water cycle. The book, Pitter and Patter, would have been a great book to read prior to this lesson. It depicts one water droplet going through the watershed, down, around, and up again. The other droplet goes underground and eventually out to the ocean. I wish that I had found the book Pitter and Patter prior to this lesson, but I will have it on hand for next year. As we continued our learning about watersheds, students learned about soil erosion. Prior to Patrick and Vincent's arrival that day, we watched several videos on YouTube. We learned about soil and topsoil and how important plants were to keeping the soil intact. We also saw the devastating effects soil erosion had on a creek when people cleared away a hillside when building new homes. During a heavy rainstorm, that creek became muddy and brown as all the topsoil washed away into the creek. When thinking about our trout, we realized that minimizing erosion near streams and creeks would help our fish survive. So when there weren't any plants on the hill, all of the water took all that mud and down the stream, right? Erosion, but when there were plants there, the plants locked it in with their roots. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have you guys all be water molecules that are going to start on the mountains, make it down the river, and eventually get to the ocean. In the next game, some of the students were trees and some were rocks. The rest of the students were water droplets making their way down from the mountain and eventually out to the ocean. If a water droplet got tagged by a tree, the child had to go around the tree five times. Later, if it was tagged by a rock, it only went around once. At the closure of this lesson, children were able to articulate that trees and plants would slow water down and thus decrease soil erosion, which would be good for our trout. And a lot of times where we live is not, we usually don't live way up high on the mountain. Right? We usually live down here by main, main stem. So today we're going to make a model of a watershed. This is what a watershed looks like looking down. This is, if you guys know the term, bird's eye view, looking from the top. When, when we come to you, leave your watershed as it is and we're gonna have rain come and fall down on it. And I want you to watch and see where the garbage goes and what happens. Just observe. All right, so here we go. So keep your hands on your head. Okay. 
See how it's making puddles as well? See where it's starting to accumulate? See where all the water ends up? Where it ends up pooling? Alright, big ridge. Oh no, what if our trout lived in there? Obviously, this activity helped children see how pollutants and garbage could get into our local watershed during rainstorms. It would be important for people to use safe fertilizers and organic pest control to ensure our trout's habitat remains free of unhealthy pollutants. The next activity was in the Life Sciences Standard under the core idea Structure and Function. Prior to doing the next activity about fish adaptations, I showed students pictures from a fish alphabet book. The photos depicted bizarre and fascinating adaptations of many types of fish. To start the activity, each group of students was handed four fish adaptation cards. These cards told each group about their fish's coloring, about their mouth shape based on feeding habits, their body shape, and the way the fish would lay its eggs. The task for each group was to make up a fish based on those four particular adaptations and then present their fish to the class. This activity helps students to realize that fish structures and adaptations have specific functions that help them to survive and grow and reproduce. So your adaptation was mottled, right? Yeah. Okay. Jack, how about you? The fish is shaped like a disc, it's very skinny. Next year, I would like to incorporate the life science standard inheritance and variation of traits. After visiting the Don Clausen Hatchery at Lake Sonoma, I realized that I could use the ideas from one of their exhibits to teach concepts from this core science strand during this unit. I might also be able to incorporate the core idea growth and development of organisms by comparing the behaviors of trout to the behaviors of other animals that help the offspring survive. The next activity was exploring food chains and food webs. This is part of a larger unit on the study of light that falls under the physical science standard, waves and their applications in technologies for information transfer. During the study of light, students learn about electromagnetic radiation and that some objects give off their own light. Before learning about the properties of light, we learn about the sun and the importance of the sun in starting all food chains and thus life on Earth. As a side note, this is where students also learn about the phases of the moon, day and night, and the seasons. This was an ingenious way to incorporate the standard Earth's place in the universe and to address the core ideas about patterns and motions of the sun, moon, and stars. To introduce food chains, we read a book about food chains and food webs. We also watched a discovery streaming video about riparian food chains and a brain pop movie. Then students constructed a trout food chain as a class and then recorded the food chain in their science journals. Part of this year's driving question was how do we teach others to successfully raise trout? This gave special purpose to our next activity. The fish tank in our classroom is set up specifically for raising rainbow trout eggs to fry. There are several components to the tank that mimic the trout's natural habitat. First, students watched a PowerPoint provided by Trout Unlimited. This PowerPoint shows how each piece involved in the setup of the tank is crucial to the survival of the young trout. Keeping the kindergarten class in mind, each student wrote a how to set up a trout tank book so that the kindergarten teacher and her students would know how to set up their own tank. This also met the writing standard research to build and present knowledge. For example, explore a number of how-to books on a given topic and use them to write a sequence of instructions. These books were then shared with the kindergarten students. The kindergarten teacher reported that they were so excited because they were studying oviparous animals and rainbow trout lay eggs. About four weeks after the arrival of our eggs, the baby fish or fry are ready to be released. This is an exciting field trip to Lake Lagunitas. Each student carefully releases a fry into the water.
Then we all went on a hike and explored the new habitat or home of our fry. Where are they? Where? Are those ants? That will not be ours. The black ones are tadpoles. The These are not ours. Guys, yeah, but look. Students drew three pictures to help them write about their experience at Lake Lagunitas. The following day, students wrote three details about the topic and an ending. The activity in this project met another writing standard which states, writes narrative in which they recount two or more appropriately sequenced events, include some details, use temporal words, and provide some sense of closure. In addition, each student typed his or her completed narrative, thus using a digital tool to publish writing. <laughs> Thinking about all the things that we've learned about trout, its life cycle, what it eats, about healthy watersheds, students made habitat posters which depicted all the things that the trout needed in its new home to survive. And uh, that's where um, and um, that's where the uh, nests are. The clouds and the sun and the rain help the water cycle and the trout wouldn't be able to live if none of this was here. The trees here so it keeps the water cool so the trout can live. And the bird um, is a predator and he's eating As one you can see, baby most dog. of this project was doing shared research and activities to give students background knowledge about trout and watersheds. Now we were ready to revisit our driving question to be sure we covered all aspects of it. The class reread the driving question. How can we teach others to successfully raise trout eggs and help them understand the importance of keeping our watershed healthy? I recorded the students' reflections about this project on posters. The conclusion of this movie is each child reading the information we generated on the posters to answer our driving question. The ways we have taught others about raising trout. We made books about how to set up a tank. We shared our books with the kindergarten class. We filmed us putting the eggs carefully in the tank. We filmed the trout release. We made a movie about the entire project. We can put our movie on YouTube under Project Based Learning so random teachers can find it and use it. We can share the PowerPoint presentation that we saw from Marin Municipal Water District and Trout Unlimited. How people can help keep the watershed clean. Plant trees and plants to minimize erosion. Don't take out native plants or cut down trees. Don't litter. Don't mm. use pesticides. Why is it important to keep our watershed clean? To keep our trout safe. To help the spiders and insects so that the trout will have something to eat. To help all the animals that live around the watershed survive because they are part of a water food web. So that we have clean water to drink. So that people can enjoy the nature around our local watershed.